Good morning. It's Saturday morning and um, I'm going to read our Friday and Saturday devotional today. Um, <clears throat> our Friday devotional is called Let Us Hold Fast to the Confession of Our Faith. <clears throat> you know, this is, this is uh, really important right now because a lot of churches are, are um, not taking the time to use the, the Apostles' Creed. And um, we were not using it for about, oh, well, through the summer, <clears throat> for sure, and had people remind us how important that is to be reminded of what our faith is all about. And so um, I uh, uh, put that back in the worship service, and I think it's, it's important. So let's see what Martin Luther has to say about this. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And that reading's from Hebrews 10, verse 23. Therefore, let, take care. <clears throat> Let nothing on earth, even if it were an angel from heaven, be so great as to drive you against your conscience and away from the teaching you recognize and regard as God's. St. Paul says in Galatians 1 verse 8, Even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. You are not the first. You are not even the only one, nor will you be the last to be persecuted for the sake of the word of God. Christ says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. <clears throat> Matthew 5 verse 10. And again, in Matthew 24 you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Again, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so, they are offering worship to God. That's from John 16. We have to take firm hold of such texts and strengthen ourselves by them. And faith Oh, wait. In fact, we ought to praise God and thank God for persecution and pray to prove worthy of suffering for the sake of his words. Remember, it is foretold that in the day of the Antichrist, no one will be permitted to preach and that all who speak and listen to God's word shall be re regarded as outcasts. That is what is happening now and it has been going on for more than a hundred years. And now it's been going on for even longer, hasn't it? Kind of scary how history repeats itself. And, and you know, that's one thing that I always point out to the kids in confirmation. I say that, um, you know, the, the pattern of, a, of the history um, and the pattern of the Bible is that we are God's people and then we acquire, we feel like we acquire so much power that we then start to think that we, it's all about us and what we did. We don't give credit to God anymore. God punishes us and we go into exile in different ways and then we f ask for forgiveness and God forgives us and the cycle starts all over again and um, we are blessed to have a patient God because I'm telling you some of the things that we do are not are not very good and we can see that's happening right now uh, in in the world not just our country but in the world um, things are happening that are are very scary. So uh, let's pray. 
<clears throat> in our time of competing voices, O oh God, let your word lead me on the right path. Amen. And now Saturday, our Saturday devotion is called In the Power of Christ. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. From John 14, verse 12. Because we have such a treasure, we have everything, and our Lord's over all Lord's. On earth, we are beggars, as Christ himself was. But before God, we are bountifully blessed with all good things. And like I said, even with a very patient God. In comparison, the world is poor and destitute, nor can it retain its goods without us. Now, why will the Christians do works just like now, why will the Christians do works just like and greater than those of Christ himself? He says that there is no other reason than this, because I go to the Father. By going to the Father, Christ means that he is to be made Lord and placed on the royal chair at the right hand of the Father, that all power and might in heaven and on earth are given to him. You will get the power to perform such works because you are my members and believe in me. Because you will be in me and I will be in you. The power that I have at the right hand of the Father, being of the same divine majesty and openly transfigured and shown forth as very God and Lord over all creatures, I shall work in you who believe in me and who, having received my word, baptism, and sacrament, steadfastly abide in them. Just as I am Lord over sin, death, hell, the devil, the world, and everything, so you shall be made more lords over these and be able to glory in the same power. This is yours, not by reason of your own worthiness or strength, but solely because I am going to the Father. Through the word and through prayer, my word will work mightily in you. So, you know, I, I hear people all the time saying, you know, I don't have the power to do that. I don't have the, you know, I... I can't talk about God to some people because it just, you know, I, I, I just can't because, you know, we're, we Lutherans are not very good at evangelizing. Um, and that's why you see some of these big churches because they, they aren't afraid of van evangelizing. They announce it to the world, don't they? And I'm not saying to go overboard like that, but if you have a friend that's hurting, wouldn't you want to offer that gift of grace to God, uh, of, of God to them? And God realizes that we're not the ones that give them faith. We are only the ones to plant the seed. And certainly we can do that. And I think that if some people realize that we are involved in that way, that we do believe and that we do accept what God has done in our lives, they might take a chance on that. Who knows? And God might jump in and hold them tight and say, welcome back. And um, we could make all the difference in the world. And, not, and we might not even know it. Um, I had a friend from uh, high school, and she was, she wrote me a note. Uh, several years ago, 
when I think, right when I think I told her I was going into the ministry and she said to me that, that I don't think, that she didn't think I realized um, how much I planted the seed in her, even in high school. And I don't remember that. Um, and she said, well, that's because it was just the way you lived your life. And while I'm really glad that I did that, I know that sometimes my life is not lived strongly that way. And, and um, so I pray to God every day, um, please help me, help me live the life that you want me to lead. And um, so we all can do it. And, and, and sometimes, like I said, we do it and don't even realize it. And um, don't be afraid. Get out there and, and don't be afraid to, to tell the people that you love how much God has done in your life because it can make all the difference in the world. God has given us the power. It's not our own power. We don't have to worry about that. When the time comes, God gives us the words. Let's pray. Lord of light, your name, na your name outshining all the stars and suns of space. Use my talents in your kingdom as the servants of your grace. Amen. Those of you who watch me, my worship service online, this week we are trying something new. Um, don't try and turn into the worship service before 9.30 because we are actually going live tomorrow and we'll see how that goes and we'll see how long we can keep doing it. Um, that's the other thing. We don't know when we might get closed down again. So um, if you're watching me, my service is online. Um, don't try and tune in again until after 9.30 or 9.30. And um, uh, you can also pick it up then later on because it will be taped then at the same time. And it will be on Facebook. So have a wonderful day and enjoy the wind. <laughs> it seems like that's about all we've had lately. But every everything is better than snow right now as far as i'm concerned so have a wonderful weekend